Good afternoon and welcome back. How's it going, everybody? I know it's been a very, very long time since I've put out anything of real substance on here. And I apologize. It's been... It's been a busy time. Everyone getting back to going out into the world, not wearing masks, and not getting vaccines and all that, all that fun stuff. So, uh, you know, don't worry. I'll be back locked in the basement soon enough. I'm a little late to the game on this one, but that's okay because I feel like I have a better understanding of what I want to say here in regards to what I'm going to be talking about today, which is another gear review. And the gear that we're going to be reviewing today is the new Archetype Tim Henson plugin from Neural DSP. For those who don't know, Tim Henson is the guitarist from the band Polyphia, has a very unique approach to the guitar. And I think he has had a large influence on a lot of the up-and-coming modern guitar players that are out in the scene. And uh, yeah, so Neural DSP made an archetype plugin based around his sort of specifications and the gear that he uses to get his unique sound. Now I'll admit, going into this, I kind of had the mindset that this entire plugin was built around sort of like one unique feature, that being the multi-voicer pedal that is in this plugin and everything else was just kind of like iterations of other things that we've already seen in other archetype plugins uh, features from Neural DSP which is not really fair because it belittles the amount of unique attributes that go into Tim Henson's sound and he has a unique sound and there's definitely a lot more going on in just one thing so um, I'm happy to say Upon further investigation into this plugin, I found myself pleasantly surprised. With that all said, let's check out what's actually going on with this plugin. So here we go. Now, with those of you that may not be familiar with the Archetype series from Neural DSP, basically what you can expect is to have three amps, three separate cabs. In some cases, they're interchangeable between the different amplifiers. And then there's separate EQs for each amplifier that you can adjust on top of the EQ section that's on the face of the amplifier. You also have the ability to introduce your own IRs into the cab section of this plugin, which is pretty cool if you have your own impulse responses that you prefer to use, as opposed to the stock ones that come with this plugin. But that's its own separate thing. So for now, let's check out the amplifiers that are offered in this plugin. Up first, we have the acoustic amp. As of recently, Tim Henson's been gravitating more and more so towards utilizing an acoustic electric nylon string guitar in terms of his compositions towards the new Polyphia record. And it only makes sense that they would make the clean amp in this plug-in an acoustic amplifier. However, this amplifier isn't only good for just acoustic guitars. It can be used with your traditional electric guitar that has conventional pickups on it. And this amp features a blend control on the front of it, which allows for the incorporation of a piazzo-like timbre into your guitar's dry signal. Very similar to the blend control that can be found on the clean amp in the Tosin Abasi Archetype plugin as well. Up next, we have the Rhythm Amplifier. This amp is a two-channel, low-gain, British-voiced amplifier that really is encompassing of the entire Polyphia guitar tone. Without really having to tweak any of the settings on it too much, you get that sound, especially if you're using like a Strat-style guitar that has three single-coil pickups where you can go between the neck in the middle or the bridge in the middle pickup in that in-between position. It's, ah, oh, it's so good. It's so good. I love it. <laughs> the tonality is bright and clarified and there's a lot of harmonic content there which speaks perfectly to Tim Henson's playing style. And then from
from there, we go on to the lead amplifier. Now here's where we're gonna find the most available gain as far as the amplifiers in this plugin, which makes sense because it's your lead amplifier. So if you're, if you're recording a lead line that you want a lot more sustain and clarity as far as the single notes that are in the lead line, this amplifier is going to provide that for you. Plus on top of that, it's just a pretty amplifier. It's pink and visually it's just so, if I could get this amplifier in real life, I would without a doubt like it's so it's good real good I feel like someone should make an amplifier like this um, if I knew how to do stuff like that I would but anyway the lead amp it's wonderful <laughs> now as I mentioned before each of these amplifiers come with their own matching cabs however it's worth noting I don't think that the acoustic amp has a cab to match along with it because every time I kept clicking over to the acoustic amp from the cab uh, section of the plugin, it just goes right back to being at face uh, view of the amp, which is interesting, but I don't think it really makes much of a difference. It's just worth noting. Also worth noting, all these amps visually are gorgeous. The amount of detail that Neural wow, DSP wow, put wow, into wow, the wow, visual wow. rendering wow. of these amplifiers is beautiful. Beautiful job. So, at the very least, they're great to look at. And just like with all the archetype models in the archetype series, before we even go into the amplifiers in the signal chain, we have our pre-effects. In this case, what we're looking at is boost, compression, and overdrive. The boost is transparent and isn't offering any additional coloring to your guitar's tone, only additional saturation overall. The compressor is really good for bringing out the dynamic of everything that you might be playing as far as your lines that you're recording in your DAW or just in general, especially if you're going to be incorporating techniques like tapping and harmonics into your playing. It really evens out the volume level of all that stuff so that everything is pronounced and nothing is really dipping volume wise. So the compressor does what a compressor is supposed to do. And the overdrive does what an overdrive does. It allows you to go from just a sprinkle of saturation being added to your guitar to much more from there. Nothing really over the top overall in this plugin as far as gain and saturation is concerned, but you know, just enough to add some grit to what you got going on. And then from there, we move on to the post effects, the effects that are taking place after the amplifier. Up first, we have the stereo chorus. I like the inclusion of a stereo chorus in this plugin because it just kind of like gives a new sort of dimension as far as where your guitar sits in a mix and it kind of breathes new life into it and just gives like more body to what you're playing overall. Plus, as far as setting it up and getting a nice sound out of it, it's really easy because it's got one knob. So, done. Easy enough. And then we have the delay pedal which features three different modes of delay, those being normal, wide, and ping pong, as well as three different delay types, which are diffusion, vintage digital, and modern. While it seems like all the other archetype models have some sort of delay function incorporated into them, this one in particular seems to be something unique in comparison because upon first using it, I was, it felt like I was taking to what felt like the introduction to some sort of anime. I just pictured like some girl standing on a cliff with her hair blowing in the wind as she looks far away at something in the distance it just brings out this unique characteristic to your guitar and um i think it's pretty cool and you can set it in a bunch of different ways and it's uh it's great i like it a lot round out the post effects section we have the reverb which is pretty simple it's reverb 
You have the ability to go from a simple short reverb to being in a shimmering empty gymnasium on top of a mountain. It's awesome. It does the reverb job. It's great. Can't ask for more. <laughs> One of the things that Neural DSP has been doing more recently is incorporating effects that are more specific and unique to the individual player that they're modeling the plugin around. Like with the Corey Wong plugin, they had a wah pedal incorporated along with a envelope filter and things of that nature. And then with Gojira, they had a whammy sort of pedal incorporated. And in this case, what's being incorporated with the Tim Henton archetype is the multi-voicer. The multi-voicer is exactly what the name implies. It's allowing you the ability to introduce multiple additional voices on top of your guitar's signal. So you can have up to four harmonizing other lines on top of your guitar, which is really, really cool. It allows for you to be able to put together these sort of like Brian May-esque multi-part harmonized lines and you could even set it up to give you sort of a vocoder sort of sound in terms of your guitar and what you're playing. <laughs> You can set it to specific keys and you can set it to specific chords. There's lots of presets in there and there's a lot of flexibility in terms of the layout of those individual intervals that you have that make up the individual voices. You can have them really close together, you can pan them out and it's really flexible in that regard. And from what I understand, it's also useful in terms of not just with guitar, but you can also use the multi-voicer with vocals. However, I wasn't able to do so in this case because I use Reason to record and for some reason it's just not for some reason. In this case I wasn't able to set it up. I'm sure there might be a way to do so in Reason, but it's not simply done. I even reached out to Neural DSP about it and they told me that there was no way to do it from what they could see, but there might be a way to do it. But either way, that's why I didn't do any sort of vocal example for this video. But with that aside, after a couple minutes of just tweaking around in the multi-voicer itself, I was able to come up with some really cool sounding effects from it as far as it being in addition to my guitar's dry signal. Oh, dude, <laughs> why don't you get a Reaper? Because I don't want to. Why not? I mean, everyone's using it. I mean, that in Studio One and Logic Pro. I mean, it, it just seems like you're holding out for nothing, bro. I mean, that's all fine and good, but I do more than just guitar-based compositions on my computer, and a lot of the resources that I need are in Reason, and I can navigate it easily without having to, like, get something new and relearn how to do everything on there. What about Pro Tools? That's the industry standard. That's not a thing. I mean, the, the music industry is a thing, but the industry standard thing, that doesn't matter anymore. Especially when you can just record like an entire album from your computer, whether it be a laptop or whatever. Plus, when I learned how to use Pro Tools, I hated it. Especially because it was on a Mac. Everything's backward and stupid on Mac, so like it was terrible. I hated it. Wait, you're not producing music on a Mac? And I'm not going to get another doll just because everyone else is doing it. Like, that's stupid. It's a waste of money. Because if I'm working on a project that has the need for something that's specific to Reason, and I'm working on it in another DAW, now i got to go and download the Reason rack just so I can use those attributes of Reason in that DAW. Stuff that I had already, I have to download, buy it again, so I can use it in this other DAW. That's stupid. Plus, I imagine it's going to be taking up a lot of space on my hard drive, and I just, like, I don't have the storage space for all that, so not, it's not worth the trouble.
And you know what? Now that I think about it, how are you in my house? How are you here? How did you get here? Never mind. Never mind. You just do what you're going to do. All right? I'm going to go. Great. Bye. Take it easy. Idiot. All right. Um, where were we? Plug in. Right. Okay. So we covered pretty much all the features that exist within this plugin. So allow me to give my final assessment overall on this thing. Overall, I was pleasantly surprised by this plugin. You get a lot for a very reasonable price. And while I was expecting the multivorce to be kind of like the main focal point of this plugin, each of the amplifiers really have their own unique voice that not only are complementary to any guitar that you plug into your computer to use with it, but also potentially inspire the player to play differently than they would normally, which I think is like the real mark of something special and successful when it comes to these plugins. It's not super high gain overall, but I also wasn't expecting it to be because I'm aware of the type of music that Tim Henson tends to create and how he goes about creating it. Um, there's never really like a bunch of chuggy stuff going on. A lot of it is kind of like in that mid-range gain strat-esque sort of tonality. And it does that sound really well. If I had to mention any sort of cons that I could think of when it comes to this plugin, I'd probably have to say the size of the text on the multi-voicer, because when you have something as elaborate as that pedal potentially can be, it helps to be able to read what all the different adjustable variables say. And it's hard to read it unless you have a giant monitor. I know Tim Henson has a giant computer monitor, he also has plants next to his computer. I don't have either. So for me to have to squint and see what it says on the screen is annoying, especially since my monitors are relatively large. So I feel like that's something that's worth taking a, a, another look at as far as the standpoint from Neural DSP, but I'm sure they'll fix that in a future update. So, I mean, of all the cons I could think of, that is pretty much the only one. I can't think of anything else that is really like a problematic issue with this plugin overall. Overall, you have the ability to produce some really nice, like clean, crunchy guitar tones with this plugin. And also, you have the ability to dress up your guitar either through the utilization of the chorus and the different forms of echo or the multi-voicer. You have a lot of cool features available to you in this plugin. And if you haven't checked it out already, I suggest you do so today. And with that guys, that's all I got for you for today. If you liked the video and you haven't already, hit that like button. And if you haven't already and you're new here, hi, but also hit the subscribe button. It's only gonna make it easier for you to see when I start posting more videos on a more frequent basis, which I promise to do. It's gonna happen real soon. So definitely stick around for that. I also wanna extend a huge thanks to my patrons over at Patreon for making videos like these possible with their continued support. And if you would like to support this channel beyond just liking and subscribing, I will leave a link in the description below for my Patreon and you can check out all the perks that are available over there. And with that, that's all I got for you for today. Hope to see you in the next video. Keep playing. Peace.